So I'm here in New Delhi, India, here with Shiv Saran. Adam Neely is here, Josh Bailey, Hello. Jared Yee. Josh and I spent the last week playing double drums for both Sungazer and for Shiv Saran. I'm Josh Bailey, I'm a drummer. Sungazer went on tour with Shiv Saran in November. That was the first Shiv Gazer tour in the US. I ended up subbing on one of the gigs with Shib's fan. Very last minute. It was really fun this time to have a little bit more time and like get much, much deeper into the subtleties of the double drumming. So that was a totally different experience and definitely a rewarding one. I think the hardest part about it is where you feel the beat, and then coming to an agreement live with the other drummer. We didn't have an issue, but it can easily become an issue. Ego is often attached to the work you put into something you care about. <laughs> and so like if we were approaching each other like, man, I don't think this is working, like you're just like rushing the shit out of this thing, then it would be super destructive from the beginning and then no creativity would happen and arguably the whole point of this music is to be creative within a confine of playing with two drummers. Woo! Day two at Jaipur Jazz Festival. Who wants a keyboard? You want a keyboard? Here's a keyboard. Tonight we're performing with Mr. Shiv Saran right behind me. So last night was a lot of fun. And tonight we're gonna be rocking out with Shub. So the highlight of tonight's show is that we're playing with not only double drummers and double sax, but also double bass. The optimal balance of like unison drum parts to arranged parts that complement each other depends on the style of music and the song and the moment within the song. Rock music tends to be a little bit simpler, a little bit chunkier, and a little bit louder. What's one way to make something loud? Double it. That's the best argument for like, why would you have two drums? It's like, man, I, I don't know, like why do you put extra guitar layers on tracks? Or like, why do you add a clap track? Or why do pop vocalists literally double the lead vocal? It's like an effect, but it also helps move it forward. And like too much of that in drum world can be too much. So we orchestrate stuff to then complement it. It's like an arrangement technique more than more than a drum technique. So the argument as to why you should have it is because uh, then you have more options from an arrangement standpoint. We don't necessarily want to both play fills at the same time. Sometimes we do, it's a lot of fun, but not all the time. There's so many things yeah. that um, I'm discovering that, that you have to be really aware of, not only the sounds and the rhythms, but like kick placement, like the rhythms on the kick, like I can't be as free as I would be in, in like a normal ensemble where I'm the only drummer. Yeah, there's a lot to be aware of and this is all stuff that's really beneficial even in a normal band. This is opening my eyes to a lot of yeah, possibilities, man. so yeah. It's the house kit. A few more times than you're used to. Oh, Jesus yeah. Christ, look at me toss around. Well, we should have enough then. <laughs> that's for damn sure. <laughs> you're gonna still use one time, aren't you? Yeah, man. Yeah. This is 
lot of uh, there's a lot of inputs in there. You know? A lot of stuff yeah. plugged in for, for no sound to come out of. Stereo DI, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's stereo, yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah stereo, also, nothing. Yeah, stereo, nothing. We've learned over time that just physically the closer we are, the better it is uh, for double drums. And oftentimes when we play outside, that's the worst case scenario. Because like sound gets away from you really fast and then it makes everything feel small. Um, and then you might overplay. It's really loud right here, but they're five feet from you and you, they're also playing loud, but you, you can't hear them. So like Jaipur was sort of, that's kind of what was going on. But honestly, the Mumbai show was a, a lot of fun, I thought. It felt like the cleanest representation of like, here's the parts, plus here's Sean and Josh, plus here's us trying something tonight. But Goa was kind of the best show for us, even though we were outside. But we were like, almost like touching. Today we're gonna be performing in Goa and we're gonna be doing a, first a clinic in the morning and a show later tonight. You know, Sean and I started this project as a duo, and we performed as a duo fair, a fair amount, but it's so much more inspiring when we have other people on stage. And I want to give a brief shout out to Mr. Josh Bailey back there on the Derms, because Josh, uh, whenever we do this like, kind of double tour with Shub, Josh sits in on a couple of tunes, and I wanted to actually pick your brain a little bit about this. You know, Sean has fairly set parts, because he wrote the parts, because the music is fundamentally based on Sean's drum parts. So how are you supposed to add on top of that kind of very set um, background? And I just wanted to ask you how you're thinking when you're approaching this. Like you said, the songs are based around Sean. So there would be no point in me doubling his incredibly complex and awesome drum parts. In fact, for the Sungazer set, I pretty much don't play the kick drum until maybe like Jared's going in on a solo and the groove happens to be four on the floor bass. I might double the kick drum, but otherwise I'm not gonna eat up any low end world because He's triggering 808 bass drums, plus playing a real bass drum, plus the band's led by a bassist. It's like, why, why would I think I have a place in the low-end world? Yeah, yeah, man. Um, and then otherwise, when music is really complex, I view it as a welcome challenge to find a, an uncomplex part to add. Essentially, I'm looking for little pockets within the groove that Sean's already created to add a sound or a rhythm that isn't already heard. Who are some of your favorite double drum pairs? Ah, double drum pairs. Uh, okay, so the first one that comes to mind is, so Tedeschi Trucks Band has two drummers. And the one guy is JJ Johnson, who's like my favorite drummer in the context of double drummers. And then the other guy, Tyler Greenwell, my man. They're all super aware of this dynamic in which essentially, like JJ plays the meat and potatoes, just like and then Tyler will double that or be the guy that does the drum fills or maybe waits to enter until like, I don't know, a later chorus just to add that extra lift. Um, but it's kind of this like spoken, not unspoken, spoken thing that like JJ's like the, like the earth in which everyone is standing on, even though the other drummer is playing the same instrument. Mm -hmm. And the fact that that's defined like seems to really work for them and that's cool. Like our dynamic was a different definition and it also worked. There's no one way to, to do this. You know, we have all these kind of like very loose rules, like don't fill at the same time, don't play the same sound sources. 
And then there's definitely moments in the show where we break all of those rules. But jazz. jazz. <laughs> I think that Corey Henry had two drummers at one point, and I know one of them was uh, Tyrone Lockett. And Tyrone seemed to be the guy that then like backed off and simplified a little bit to let something else happen. If I'm the only drummer in the band, I'm usually taking care of all the fills and you know, I gotta support the band by myself. But when there's two of us and I hear that Josh is going for something, like, okay, let me just back off, let him take this moment. And then like Snarky Puppy now, they're cutting records with like three drummers at once, you know, which is super cool. I should mention too, like, in terms of the lineage of this whole concept, like Almond Brothers and the Grateful Dead always had two drummers. I love that music. I love the Almond Brothers. Like my dad got me hooked on them pretty early, but it wasn't for the double drummers. It was for, I was actually, I used to like it because of the guitar harmony, like the lead lines that were harmonized. Again, it's the same concept though. Two guitarists harmonizing, complimenting each other. It's like, you know, a band of twos, so. Okay, so it's the last gig of the tour today. There was a last minute change because of the weather. It's gonna rain, so we're moving from outside to inside. This is the spot. Adam's vlogging <laughs> behind. <laughs> Everybody's vlogging. Who knows? Vlog. Vlog. No one gets vlog. Should. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but it kind of works for most things. Gotcha. Gotcha. Like, gotcha. Sometimes we'll yell at each other on a gig like, come on, yeah, or whatever. <laughs> We're joking that like, for like some of this stuff, we should just start yelling like, acha, acha. <laughs> and the other person is like, that sounds so wrong. <laughs> the way you say it sounds so wrong. Acha. 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 So I've definitely learned a lot about double drumming on this tour. It's been really nice to have a bunch of shows in a row because it has allowed us to get into the subtleties of this kind of drumming. By the second gig, we weren't really talking about parts anymore. It was more talking about yeah. how to play together. That's the, like the biggest thing. Yeah. It's like get away from what the drum parts are and figure out how to execute it as tightly because like double drums is just so exposed. It is. The goal is to get away from just worrying about the parts yeah. as soon as possible. So that way we can actually worry about like executing this super complex idea of double drumming. Yeah, yeah. Man, it's been, it's been fun. It yeah, chilling, man. Dog, he gets it. Yeah, <laughs> totally, totally.